welcome to the next episode of Star Mountain Outdoors and Bushcraft. I'm John, and on today's episode, I thought I would just spend a day in the woods working on my shelter building skills. So let's see how many shelters I can come up with. As you can see, I found an area with no shortage of dead and down materials. Um, I think this was an old fire break during a, a recent fire. So the fire crews cut down these trees along here to form the fire break and uh, left them on the ground. So this is what I'm going to be using for my materials along with the typical dead and down materials you find around the woods. Okay, over here I've located a downed tree with a fork in it. I think I'll use this for my shelter. In this instance, I decided to use an axe to cut the leaner with, um, for safety's sake, because I knew it could possibly fall, and if I was really close to it, using a saw actually touching the log, um, it could fall on me and that sort of thing. Um, with the axe, I have more reach. I went back to using a saw to cut this upper piece um, just because it uses less energy um, for me than using an axe. Alright, this first shelter is going to be an A-frame shelter, and my goal with this is to build it with little or no cordage. The wood isn't that strong, <laughs> but you, you get the you get the point. It's a pretty strong shelter. As you can see on the ridge pole, 
there's a lot of branch stubs and little pokey things. I want to remove those before I put the tarp on there, so that's my next step. I had cut in too far into the wood and left a splinter which could tear the tarp so I had to carve it off from the other direction to smooth out the log. Okay, now it's time to put up the tarp, and then I can make the stakes to stake it down with. Oops, it does come with stakes. I'm not going to use those. I'm going to use actual bushcraft stakes. Alright, where is the center of this guy? I think it's right here. You know, there's even a simpler way to do this. By using a rope between two trees, you can make a really simple A-frame shelter too. But I wanted to work with wood today, so that's what I'm doing. Now it's time to make my taut line hitch. And I can pound that stick in a little bit. If I want to get fancy, I can chamfer the edges so that it doesn't split and that sort of thing. But for what I'm doing right now, this is fine.
All right, I'm in shelter number one, and it is large enough that I can stand up in. I can put a bed down here. I'd be protected from rain. I still might get some splash up and that sort of thing. I could make it a little lower so that the sides go all the way down to the ground. But uh, I, mean, I could stake it down more, make it a little nicer and neater. But, uh, you know, this will do the trick in most situations. So uh, that's shelter number one. Woohoo! And uh, let's, just take, let's just take a little closer look at it too. I didn't say I'd make pretty shelters. I could make it a lot prettier than this, but uh, considering, let's see, what time is it? I got here about 9.30. It is now 10.30, so I've spent an hour, and most of that was looking for forked pieces because there's not a lot of forked wood around here. Um, but anyway, pretty simple setup. Um, some things I did to make it a little sturdier was I leaned that piece against the tree. Um, it could still fall back that way a little bit. Uh, I could use some cordage and tie that so it's a little sturdier too. Um, and then I could pull the stakes out more and that sort of thing because that's I just did this really quick. I wasn't looking for perfection like I said but uh, it would keep the rain off me and you know, an easier, even easier way to do it, like I said before, would be to just use a rope tight between two trees at the height you want, and uh, do it that way. Um, you can see, let's see, where's a good one that I tied? I think it was over here. I used taut line hitches. Um, so that I could adjust the tension on the rope on the tarp you can see right there it's an adjustable knot that can slide up and down to ease or add tension to the tarp it's as simple as that and you can see that it's just I just use three knots around there and then flip it around the outside pull it through and that's it that's the knot I have a stowaway. For my next shelter creation, I need a nice tall tripod. Let's go three wraps and two fraps. As you can see for this, I'm just using bank line. There's my three wraps. Put these closer together. It doesn't really matter that much. That's one. And two. I'm just going to use a simple overhand knot, nothing fancy, and there we have our tripod set up. Um, next thing I need to do is clean up the logs, get rid of the pokies again.
I just don't want anything sharp that's going to punch through the tarp, you know. So you just kind of carve them smooth. And I might have to do some finishing up later too. too far in. There we go. It'll still work. I don't think it'll even get up that, the tarp will even get up that far probably, but all right, now let's set this thing up. again. Obviously I found another sturdier pole to take the place of the broken one. I was trying to find really thin light poles to use to make it easier to set up but it kind of backfired on me. Make sure everything's smooth. And there's a thing right here I probably want to take off. Yeah, it's probably not going to hit the tarp though. I think it's fine. I just need to find some uh, more poles to add to the teepee here. So that's the next step. Alright. Here's my teepee. I'm not going to do any more than this. I think this is enough um, to get the point across. But you can add more sticks. You can add cross twigs, you know, flexible, maybe green cross twigs or whatever to make it more sturdy. You know, there's a lot of variations on this shelter. But for me, I'm just going to use a tarp for now and try that out. I've never done it before. It should be interesting. Let's see if it works. Alright, so this experiment was not a success. Obviously, I need a much bigger tarp to do this with. But, uh, you get the idea. And it's just good practice. Would it be practical for an actual wilderness shelter? I don't really know. I don't think so. Um, the Native Americans that use this type of shelter used it on the plains, not in the forest really, so... And that's because they could drag the long poles behind them through the plains. Whereas in a forest situation, you wouldn't want to do that, so... I mean, you could, you could set one up as like a permanent wigwam and use natural materials and that sort of thing, and that might work. Um, the problem is around here, we really don't have um, that many natural materials like um, leaf debris and stuff like that. Um, it's just not available in most places here. So I think I like the A-frame better for around here anyway in the southwestern U.S. Um, but if I had an area where there's lots of bark or something I could use as shingles and I don't know, tie them on somehow, maybe poke a hole with with my knife through the shingle and then tie it on. It'd take a lot of cordage but and a lot of work. Um, but then again you can't build semi-permanent <laughs> structures on, you know, federal lands, so 
Hmm. I think the A-frame is better. Easier, too. Anyway, that's what's going on now. Um, I guess I'll eat lunch and build my next shelter. Alright, hey there, everybody. Um, got done with lunch, started gathering materials for my next shelter build, and I tripped on a log and slammed my knee onto a rock. <laughs> Crap. Um, I thought about cussing and complaining about it, but, you know, in all actuality, it's just good to be out here. I'm having a good time today, and I was just glad to take a day off and get out in the woods, so I have nothing to complain about. But I am going to call the day short. My knee's swelling up a bit. Um, I don't know if I can show you here. Let me pull my pants leg back. It's not too bad. I've had worse. But, you know, it's a little bruised. Just a slight bit bloody. Not bad. <laughs> I built two of the ugliest shelters I've ever built and had some fun in the woods, so who can complain about that? <laughs> Um, hope everybody enjoyed the experience as much as I did, and uh, we'll see you next time on Star Mountain Outdoors and Bushcraft. Have a good one, and uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Check the links down below. Um, I've got links to my Hike For page where you can donate to the American Cancer Society based on the number of miles I hike on the AT in 2021. So that, that's a big thing for me. And I've got a GoFundMe to help pay for the trip. Um, and other than that, I've got a store and a blog site and those kind of things. So please check out the links down below. And again, we'll see you next time on Star Mountain Outdoors and Bushcraft. Have a good one.